All right, well, we'd like to thank everybody for being here at the National Institute of Health Conference on chemotherapy. I've been studying chemotherapy and pharmacokinetics in my biomedical engineering class at BYU, and the three of us have also studied chemical reaction engineering and heat and mass transfer, which forms a basis for the pharmacokinetics and the models that we will talk about here. And we know that there have been some concerns about the proper dosage of chemotherapy. In the past, there have been a few patients that received a dosage that was slightly too high, and there was some sickness and some damage done to the healthy tissue. There have also been cases where the dosages were too low and the cancer tumors weren't effectively reduced. So our objective today will be to maximize the tumor reduction of the cancer cell to eliminate as much of it as possible, but to minimize the concentration of the doxorubicin drug in the tissue to not do damage to those healthy cells. And the criteria for our dosages is a two-hour constant IV infusion, which is typical for chemotherapy treatments. We'll have a constant concentration in the IV. We determined a maximum safe concentration was going to be 0 0.0019 milligrams per milliliter of the doxorubicin drug in the tissue, which was a typical value we found in a paper on doxorubicin. And we have a target to reduce the tumor by 90%. So in order to do this, we need to create a model. Uh, our model is based on a two-compartment model used commonly in pharmacokinetics, where the blood and the tissue are the two compartments. And so the derivation of our first principles model, we, we have our accumulation term here, and then we have our in values um, coming in and values going out. So it's just basically accumulation equals out minus in. And so, or in minus out, however you want to <laughs> think of it. And so from that first principles model, we were able to derive transfer functions for the concentration in the blood as function of IV flow rate and also concentration in the tissue as a function of um, the concentration in the blood. And in order to determine the way in which the cell, the tumor was affected, we needed to know the this cancer cell death rate as well, so we derived an equation for that. Once we had those equations, we were able to create a Simulink model in which we had our input values being the concentration of doxorubicin in the IV and the flow rate of the IV. Now for our model, both of these were constant. We changed them according to different dosages. So the concentration in the IV is our dosage amount. And then we have our two transfer functions for the blood and our transfer function for the tissue. And once we were able to, once we had that established, we had our concentration in the tissue known and we were able to then feed it into our equation for cell death. Now we didn't do a transfer function for that. Um, due to complications and time constraints and so it was easiest for us just to put it in in the time domain. And so from that we were able to do a number of different tests with um, different concentrations and got our following results. So here you see our results. Um, the graph on the left clearly shows tumor tissue concentration. The y-axis shows the concentration of a uh, drug in milligrams per milliliter in the, in the tissue. Uh, the, the x-axis is time in hours. And so we see that the gray line is the low dose. Uh, it's what we found in experimental data to be about an average dose uh, of doxorubicin uh, for cancer patients. And what we set as the yellow line was that target that Eric mentioned earlier of 0 0.0019 milligrams per milliliter. And that we set as our maximum, uh, the maximum amount of drug we want in the tissue cells. Uh, above that, we believe we're reaching unsafe levels and so the goal was to go above this low dose, uh, but to not exceed it. So the blue line uh, clearly shows a, a high dose, something that exceeds uh, the safe levels. And the red dose is where we optimized it. And then on the graph on the right, you see the same dosages, the low dose being about 0.06 milligrams per milliliter in the IV bag, the optimum about 0.099, and the high dose being about 0.12 uh, for reference. And then, so the graph on the right shows tumor cell count, literally the number of cells in, in 
average tumor of about one millimeter in diameter. Uh, and you see how the low dose uh, stays clearly above our, our yellow line once again is the target, as mentioned previously, to be about 90% uh, cell death. And so we optimized with the red, got really close to right on target, and the blue, again, is uh, exceeding the, the goal, but of course at the risk of uh, too much in the system. And as is uh, common with projects of this nature, where there's a time limit, we always see while we're working what kind of we could have improved on, if we had more time, what we could work on. And one of the things is all of our data is based on an 80 kilogram individual average. And so uh, realistically, we'd want to uh, kind of focus that to each individual to get specific data for an individual patient instead of just averages. Uh, we also would like to do more experimentation on our uh, cell death rate. Uh, if we could get more precise answers on exactly how doxorubicin kills the cells, we could get a, a much more accurate curve. Um, but otherwise, we, we feel that our data is, is compelling.